<clears throat> Hello YouTubers, it's Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly video and as usual I got some stuff to share with you. Um, well, uh, what should we start with? Let's start with, well, I picked up one item in the store this last week and this is it right here. There it is. That's it. Green Light Hot Pursuit Series 28, City of Orlando, Police Department, Orlando, Florida. I didn't have a ground, Crown Vic in my uh, Green Light collection, believe it or not. There's like a thousand of these out. A thousand different variations of this one. This one just caught my eye for some reason. It looks cool, and it's a kind of a shout-out to my buddy, Angel, uh, AR Hotbox, who digs Hot Pursuit Series and lives around Orlando, Florida. So, pretty cool. Uh, so there's that, and then, um, so I don't have a lot of quantity of stuff, but I definitely have some quality here to share with you, uh, starting with my buddy Shiresh was at the LA convention, okay, so the 50th anniversary, uh, 32nd annual Hot Wheels Collectors Convention in Los Angeles, California, that was October 3rd through the 7th, to do this year, 2018, and he picked me up two cars that I was able to keep, which are is this guy right here, the Mercury Comet Cyclone. Very, very awesome. We are going to open this in the second segment of the video. It's number 4911 out of 6,000. So there's only 6,000 of these out there. And uh, this is actually my favorite of the convention pieces, believe it or not, is this uh, Comet Cyclone. These aren't going for two too bad uh cash on ebay i do have by the way i do have his other convention cars i've got them all listed on my ebay um for buy it now prices um so check them out i guess if you're interested in them there's not really great deals but you know whatever all right so and then this dots in 510 wagon so he was gracious enough to hook me up with these uh, this is number 2793 out of 6000 so we're going to open up both of these cars um, in the second segment. Now, the cars that we're not going to open up because they're not mine um, are the other remaining ones. So there, this was the dinner car, uh, the steampunk truck right here. Uh, this one is number 3578 out of 4,000. This actually is going to my buddy Crazy Todd from Shiresh. And then these two, which are both on my eBay, and neither of them are mine to, to keep. Uh, this is the club exclusive classic TV series Batmobile for the RLC party car in pink. Very, very nice looking uh, classic TV series Batmobile. These are not numbered, by the way, just so you know. And I'm pretty sure these are going to be available later on in the RLC club uh, for RLC members this year. I think they will be available probably later in the year. And then, uh, the, of course, the finale car, the 55 Chevy Bel Air Gasser. So, pretty cool. I would like to have one of these. This is number 416. So, it's a pretty low number out of 4,500. And it is on my eBay right now. Um, I would like to have it. It's a, it's a reverse. If you didn't know, it's a reverse color scheme of the... Uh, the Midwest convention, the one that was in, uh, wow, why am I drawing a blank? Texas, Houston, Texas. And uh, so it's a reverse color scheme of that, which I do have that one. It would be cool to kind of get this one eventually, maybe down the road when it's not ridiculously priced, or who knows if it will ever go down in price. But these are pretty much, people are asking, 175 to like $200 for these cars, for this one. So it's a pretty expensive little piece. So those, obviously, these two and the Steampunk, we will not be looking at or doing anything with in the second segment of the video because they're not mine to open, so I won't be opening them. Um, so there's that. Um, he did also pick me up. He did some room-to-room -room purchases, and there was one item that he did pick me up, and this was the Ferrari Racer, uh, the Ferrari F512M, which is basically a Testarossa. This is a version of this I did not have. So I am glad to have it. We will open up this in the second segment of the video. These are pretty pricey when you come across them, these Ferrari racers. Uh, they can be pretty expensive, just like the speed machines. They can be kind of expensive. They've got the weird uh, like coal mold wheels. They're not rubber, they're plastic. Um, they look pretty cool. All right, so there is that. And then the only other thing I got was I got two shipments from my favorite um, eBay seller. 
Um, and so we got some really cool Kyosho to take a look at. And of course, we're going to take close looks at these cars, all of them, in the second segment. So, and he did also, he's such a cool eBay. He sent me an extra, which you don't normally get extras from eBay sellers. Um, but he knows I'm a frequent flyer, so he went ahead and sent me this Lamborghini Silhouette in red, Kyosho, as an extra. So I didn't pay for this. He just sent it along, with along with a note that said, this is the gift. Certainly. So thank you so much, bud. Um, if you watch my videos, thank you so much for that. That is really awesome. That was a really cool gesture. He also sent along, he always sends along origami too. So he sends along paper cranes and stuff like that, which I've told you guys about that before and why that's kind of significant and kind of cool to me. Um, but uh, he also sent along these, which is pretty cool. I got Mini Car Magazine 2018. Looks like Volume 4. So that is pretty cool. And then 2018 Volume 8. Mini Car Magazine. So I'm not sure what the deal is with these little magazines, but they do kind of, I think they show stuff that's coming up or stuff you can order. Um, however, it is all in Japanese writing. I cannot read it. So I believe that's Japanese, I should say. Um, I don't know if these are put up by Kyosho or what, but um, kind of interesting. New model gallery. So it shows a bunch of different scale vehicles in here. A lot of it's larger than 164 scale. Um, just to show you some color photographs there. So, but really cool to look look at and just kind of a neat little ad that he threw those, these little mini car magazines in and I, I think that's really awesome so thank you very much for that so now to the meat of the matter um six cars that i got from him um i got the lamborghini bravo in gold and we'll talk about this car in the second segment when we take a closer look at it uh this is from lamborghini collection three so we got that one we got sticking with lambo here for a minute we got the lamborghini diablo sv so there is that one. And this is from Lamborghini Series Collection 4. Mini Car Collection 4. And then another Lambo, the Lamborghini Uraco Rally. Here's that one there. And then again, we're going to take real close-up looks at these in a second. This is also from Lamborghini Collection 3. And then going away from Lamborghini, we got the Maserati I don't know how to pronounce this. Camson? Camson? Comson? Cam? Whatever it is. You can read it there in the base, maybe. But this is a really cool car. And um, this is from Maserati Mini Car Collection. So I think they only had one of these out. Um, and then, then I got two Aston Martins. We'll do this one first. This is the Aston Martin LMP1. The number seven car. Very cool, and that is from Aston Martin. This says Aston Martin Sedentary Collection, and I don't know if that's numbered. I don't know if it's the only Aston Martin collection they put out. Probably not. And then this Aston Martin V8 Vantage, which is just, I mean, amazing looking. And this comes from that same uh, mini car collection. So. Long story longer, I ordered these cars actually off of his eBay all over a month ago, I think. Um, they did get held up to no fault of the seller at all. Um, there was a, I think, a typhoon in um, an airport in Japan, and actually they were stopped. That airport was closed down, so these were stuck there for like three weeks or something like that before they started to move. And then once they started to move, I got them pretty quick. Usually when I get stuff from him, um, it doesn't really take all that long to get it. It's usually a couple weeks, like two weeks or something like that. It's coming from Japan, whatever, and it's, it's just shipping. I mean, most of his cars are auctioned and they're free shipping. So you can't really complain about that. Um, and usually I get them pretty, pretty, pretty quick. These ones took forever, but it that's okay because it kind of timed out well to come into this video when I didn't really have as much to show you. So if they would have came previously, I had a lot of stuff, other stuff to show and you know, whatever, it would have crowded the, crowded the time. So 
this works out perfect. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and flip the camera around. We're gonna open up a couple of convention pieces. We're, we'll start with this green light. Let's just get the green light out of the way. Um, we'll open up a couple of convention pieces. Uh, we'll open up that Ferrari and then we're going to open up all of these. We'll get these uh, Kyoshos off of their base and kind of talk about the cars and why I picked the ones I picked and all of that stuff. And hopefully you'll find that somewhat interesting. All right. So let's go ahead, flip it around, stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you after the commercial break. All right. So let's start by taking a quick peek at the city of Orlando Police Department, Orlando, Florida. 2010 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. So they've done a million of these Hot Pursuit series. They really have. There's a list of uh, what's also in the series. Uh, the other one I did pick up from the series was the van, um, the GMC Vandura from New York City Police Department. I've shown that in a previous video. But here is the Crown Vic. And, I mean, that is a nice-looking cast of this car for sure. Let me try to get my camera adjusted here. Always a challenge right in the beginning. So there it is. City of Orlando Police Department. So these have uh, painted on headlights or tampoed on or whatever. They have tampoed on taillights. They use a reflective paint though in the back on most of them so it looks uh, pretty cool. And then they got the light bar, of course. Uh, they also have opening hoods. Let's see if I can get this one open. It's kind of hard. I don't want to try to do my usual kind of tap on it here to try to get it open. And I'm not going to even go there. I don't want to knock off the light bar. So it is number 878 out of who knows how many. Not really sure. Uh, but they've definitely been doing the Hot Pursuit series for a long time. It is a popular series from Greenlight. Uh, my buddy Angel tries to collect them all. And he drives a Crown Vic, so he definitely would dig this one. So that's going to be it for that one. I just wanted to show that car really quick. I think it's a really great example of this casting, so I'm glad this is the one I picked out to, to buy. I could have got, I mean, there's so many I could have got. Let's do this Ferrari Racer real quick. This Ferrari Racer F512M. And rip that open. Ooh, that's cool. I didn't know that. It's got a metal base. So it's got metal base, metal body. It's in like this satin red finish, which looks really good. And I really like the wheels on it. I think they look really good for that car. So check that out. Looks pretty nice. Looks like it's got a chrome interior. Or is it a black? I don't know. That's a black plastic piece right there. So I'm not sure exactly how many pieces are in this casting. It looks like there is more than just the chrome interior and the metal base. There's another black plastic piece maybe in it. I've never taken actually one of these particular versions apart. I've taken apart the Ferrari Testarossa, which is a different casting than this, which is the older uh, Testarossa version. But it is definitely a cool one to have, and I'm glad to check that one off of the list. Uh, next up, what should we do here? Let's do the, the Bluebird 510 Wagon first uh, from the LA convention. So here it is. I mean, you guys have probably seen this card art and all this stuff. Lamley Group shows them, you know, probably before anybody else does. Um, so I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time. This is number one in a series of three vehicles made to commemorate the 32nd annual Hot Wheels Collectors Nationals. So, yippee yippee. Pretty cool though. It's another uh, Datsun 510 wagon. Let's go ahead and open it up. Check it out. And it is pretty nice. It is pretty sweet. So, uh, this one, we've got full deco, as you should. It's a convention piece, including a little uh, license plate on there. I don't know if they've ever done that on the back of one of these, but that is a kind of a neat addition. There's also some nice trim going on here uh, around the windows, which looks really good, this black trim. 
that's not something I noticed when it was in the package. Uh, and then it's got, so this is a big old tampo right on the side here. Well, actually it's split in two. The paint, the like the base color of the car is like this Spectra Flame blue, uh, where it doesn't look like the, the body was chromed uh, prior to the paint. So you can still see like come some Zamac kind of like texture metal look uh, underneath the paint, which is actually is kind of nice. And um, then you got Real Rider tires, of course. And it's a cool little piece. Um, who doesn't like the Datsun 510 wagon? Does it deserve as much hype as it's got? I don't know. Maybe not. That's for that's for your opinion. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. And they painted the mirrors black too, which is kind of nice. And then it's got this stripe on the top. Now they still like the tampo work on this thing. It's pretty sharp, but you can definitely see like in the blue, it's got some dot matrix kind of stuff going on that we've seen in a lot of the premium lines lately, uh, including pop culture. It's not super high definition, which is disappointing. I just, I, I just wish they would kind of figure out a way to print on these cars where the resolution is just a little bit sharper. Um, it doesn't need to be like crazy amount more sharp, but it definitely needs a little more sharpness to it. And I don't know how, if you can see it in the camera when I'm talking about, but you can definitely like notice that this blue is printed over a white layer and you can kind of see the white layer through it. And it just is what it is. So, but it does look great and I am glad to add it to my collection. So thank you very much again, Shuresh, for that one. Uh, next up is the Peppermint Twist. I was really pumped to get this one. This one is really cool. So this is number two out of three in the series. Of course, the third one is the Gasser, which we're not gonna be opening up or looking at. But here is the Peppermint Twist in the package. And we'll go ahead and pop her open. It's just so funny when you start like opening up cars like this, and after a while, it really just becomes no big deal. At first, you know, if this was like a year or two ago, I probably would be like super nervous about opening these up. Oh, good, should I open them? Should I not? And then once you start opening everything, it just really any concern just kind of fades away. So here is the Peppermint Twist, and this is just an amazing casting. I love this casting, and I think they did an excellent job with this one. This is by far my favorite out of the convention pieces. Yes, I like it even better than the Chevy Bel Air Gasser. I think it's just so cool. So Peppermint Twist, and they did like the same kind of idea that they did with the Copperhead Nova which is from the uh, Dallas convention. Sorry, Dallas, not Houston, Dallas, Texas. I said Houston in the first half. Sorry about that. Uh, but this one is, uh, it's got that textured top. And so does the twist. The twist also has a textured top with this like candy cane look. Um, I, you know, I just think it's really cool. It's really unique. I love these gasser castings or these drag racing castings. That's so why I'm really excited for the drag strip demons to come out in car culture. I think that set is going to be definitely the set of the year for Hot Wheels, uh, which should be out fairly soon, I would imagine. Uh, so the paint is really cool. And again, it's like a Spectra Flame paint and the under like body is not like chromed like an RLC piece typically would be. So you do see the Zamac, like raw Zamac underneath the paint. And I actually kind of prefer that on these. This one was an interesting one because it, looked, it appears like the body has a complete wrap on it. Like it's not painted almost, it's like completely tampoed is what this one looks like, this Copperhead one. So really uniquely constructed uh, for Hot Wheels, as far as I know. And then this one's definitely unique too with this textured top. So I don't know how exactly they did that, um, but I am glad that they did. And I think this thing looks amazing. Just looks amazing. So I'm happy about owning that. So thank you very much again, Shuresh. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at some Kyosho. So let's start with this one, the Lamborghini Silhouette. Um, I did, um, by suggestion of one of my buddies, Angel, I did a little bit of looking into these cars. I like the these older, I'm getting into like the 70s European cars. 
and 70s like supercars like the styling of those cars i just think is really neat and this fits the bill for that uh the silhouette was debuted in the 76 geneva auto show uh, the only 54 of these cars were ever produced in real life, these Lamborghini silhouettes. Uh, they featured a target top, so it had a removable top. It had a 3-liter V8 engine. It was a, a mid-engine rear-wheel drive, like most Lamborghinis are. And this one's in red. So just a really cool car. Um, so this one, so this must be part of why he gave it to me for nothing. Uh, the base appears to have been cracked and then re-glued. So I don't know how that happened exactly. But the base definitely had some damage on it. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a cool example of the car. And the bases for Kyosho aren't really anything to write home about anyway. Um, so I just think this is really cool that he just threw this in and gave it to me. And I'll keep it as an example of this car. So another fun little fact, you'll see some older Lamborghinis that will have this B logo. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna probably butcher the pronunciation, but it's for Bertone or Bertone, B-E-R-T-O-N-E. -E. Um, and that's because these Lamborghinis, this Lamborghini was designed by Bertone, which, uh, which is a company that did designing and um, all sorts of stuff. It was a car maker basically that made cars and designed cars for other companies such as Fiat and Lamborghini and um, uh, some uh, Aston Martin, I think, as well, uh, Maserati, um, all sorts of different European companies. And uh, so this was designed by Marcello Gandini, which a lot of older Lambos were designed by Marcello Gandini. And we're going to get into that a little bit here uh, with these other models that we're going to take a look at. So here is the first one here, the Lamborghini Silhouette. Of course, it's metal body, plastic base, as lens detail for the um, taillights. The headlights would have been pop-up, and they're not in the upright position, so you don't get to see them. Uh, but just a very cool little Lambo piece. So we'll set that one to the side. Uh, next one we'll take a look at, actually, let's take a look at the Lamborghini, well, let's do the Yuriko, Yuraco, the Lamborghini Yuraco rally so here's a lamborghini Yuraco rally the rally part is actually kind of important um so the Yuraco, as i unscrew this from the base and by the way i love kiosha packaging if you're not familiar with it i think it's some of the coolest packaging out there it's one little screw to get the car off of the base it comes in a little bubble and i just think it's great the way that they're packaged and then they also come with this little card that slips in the bottom of the base that tells you some stuff about the car that i can't read and then tells you what collection it's in and all that good stuff. Usually it also tells you whatever colors the car is available in. And I don't know if this was available in any other color. Uh, but here is the Yuraco Rally. So uh, the Yuraco is pretty an interesting one. This was also designed by Marcelo Gandini um, for Bertoni. Uh, this one was introduced in 1970 at the Turin Auto Show, and it was produced from 1973 to 1979. Or 791 Yurakos were made. Uh, they all featured a V8 engine, but they had different versions of that V8 engine, 2 liter, 2.5 liter, and a 3 liter uh, engine. It is a 2 plus 2 coupe, so it does have back seats in it. However, this rally version of it, the back seats are axed from the car. Um, so this rally basically was a souped up version that was, uh, produced by Bob Wallace in 1973, who is the same guy that also did the Lamborghini Mura Jota, or, or, yeah, I think it's probably pronounced it, Jota. Um, I could be wrong in the pronunciation there as well. Um, the actual real Yuraco, and I believe there, rally, and I believe there is only one in real life that exists, is orange. It's not this black color. But man, does this thing look awesome in black. It looks great in black. Those two big tailpipes in the back, those are not stock, so they were not on the stock Yuraco. Uh, this little body kit in the front was not stock to the Yuraco. And this thing had a special, specially tuned engine as well, and I think it had uh, fatter tires on the back as well. There was a couple, a couple little cosmetic changes to it. And I just think this Lambo looks totally awesome. I mean, that is a fantastic looking car. And 
it just looks really, really great. So this thing also had pop-up headlights that were kind of set back on the hood. And then there's your tail lights there and the tailpipes. Very cool wheels. Um, it does have little lenses right there for the fog lamps. That's pretty cool. And it just looks looks really, really awesome. So I, I really like this car. I'm glad to have added it to the, the old school 70s Lambo collection from Kyosho, which is, it's, which is growing. And then adding to that, we got the Lamborghini Bravo. So this car, the Lamborghini Bravo, this car was ever never actually put into production. You can't say it was never made because it was made. The Bravo was a concept car that was presented in 1974 at the Turin Auto Show. This is also a Marcello Gandini design. And um, the car was a working prototype. It did roll. It had a 3-liter V8 in it, 300 horsepower. And it went through almost 168,000 miles of testing uh, before they just, they never really, never really ended up putting it into production. Maybe because it looks a little too crazy, I don't know. But a lot of the design cues from this ended up being used on the later Countach. Um, and it is a pretty wacky looking car. It's definitely like what the 70s thought the future was going to look like. And it's just pretty wild in there. Um, I think the interior didn't have a lot of space in it, though. It had barely anything in it. And I don't think they, it was developed to the point where the interior was actually really developed. So it was very minimal on the inside there. You had a seat and a, a steering wheel and whatever you actually needed to drive the car. I don't think there was any climate control or anything like that in the, in the rolling prototype. So uh, pretty cool little car, though, and definitely an interesting look for this car. I don't know what the actual color was of the real one. I think it was like a green, actually. But it looks really cool in like this gold color. And I think, uh, so I was glad to, to grab this one. I think it was also the debut of these five dot wheels for Lamborghini as well. So that was a new design wheel. And I think this was the first time that these appeared was on this. So that is kind of cool. So it was presented, it was an idea to replace uh, the Uraco. Um, which actually ended up getting replaced, I believe, by the um, the silhouette. So, very, very cool. Very cool little Lambo. So, there's the old Lambos. And then I guess you could consider this one old. This is uh, this one here is from is a Lamborghini Diablo SV. We're going to go ahead and open up that. I've got a couple of different Kyosho Diablos and Countaches. Uh, but I saw this one in this yellow color. I just thought it looked uh, very, very neat. So I had to grab it. Oh, by the way, if you want to know the other cars that are in this series, here's the other cars. Definitely wouldn't mind having some of these down here on the bottom. I do have that one. Um, I've got this 25th anniversary Countach. And I don't have the Mira Jota or any of the others. I should probably show you the box for the other one. It's a cool thing on the box. They show you all the different cars that were available. So here it is in orange. That's a legit color for that Uraco. And then silver and black. And there are the other colors, different other cars you can kind of see there. But they've had a lot of series of Lambos, and none of them are bad. So definitely recommend picking up a Kyosho Lamborghini if you can. So let's go ahead and get this Diablo off of the base. Again, really simple, one screw, comes right out, plastic base. And this one is not a roller. And you will have that from time to time with Kyosho. This one looks like it's got a little bit of a bent axle in the back too. So more of a static display. I probably could fix that axle, but I'll probably just leave it like that for ride height, for the best ride height. So I think that looks pretty good. And that one's in yellow. You got a little, you got the bowl right there on the side. That looks pretty cool. And just a really good looking car. And by coincidence, the original Diablo also was designed by Marcello Gandini. So designed by the same guy. So Diablos, of course, were produced from 1990 to 2001. Almost 3,000 Diablos were made, 2,881. There's been tons of different versions of the Diablo, however. Lots of different versions. Um, so this is the SV, which was first made in 95, and they made it from 95 to 98. 
features of the SV where it did have a larger engine, I think, than the standard Diablo. It was 510 horsepower V uh, V12. And the other interesting thing about it is it was only rear wheel drive. There were uh, Diablos that had a four wheel drive system. Uh, this one had rear wheel drive. And then this one has lens detail here in the headlights, lens detail in the rear. Uh, a lot of Diablos also had pop-up headlights, the original ones. This, of course, does not. It has the headlights actually set back and lensed. And the uh, top of it looks a little bit different, too. So just a really cool little car. I had to add this to the Lamborghini collection, my Lamborghini Kyosha collection, which is just fantastic. So super glad to add that and uh, is definitely a cool one. All right, so we got a couple more to show you quick. Uh, let's do the this one here. This is the Aston or the Maserati Camson. Camson, someone who can pronounce that. Well, you're not going to really be able to phonetically spell it, probably, but whatever. So this is it uh, from the Maserati collection. If you want to see what other cars were in the collection, here's a quick brief look at it would love to get the mc12 that's a cool one for sure um, but just some other cool ones there in that collection and here it is so maserati so you're going to take a look at this car and you're gonna be like wow you know it does look like your typical um 70s uh, kind of design for a supercar in the 70s and you'd be right because it was designed by bertoni uh, Marcello Gandini. So it was designed by the same fellow who designed this and the other Lambos that we looked at already today. So, and you'd be right because it looks just like it. You know, I mean, it looks, it's got his kind of design cues. So it's very awesome. I think it's really, really cool. These were made from 1974 to 1982. They had a 4.9 liter V8. They were a front engine rear wheel drive two plus two coupe. So you have two small seats in the back that you probably couldn't fit anybody in anyway. Uh, but this one's actually got some base detail, which is pretty cool because you don't see that with Kyosho as often. I don't know the dates as far as when these things came out. So I'm not that well versed in Kyosho to tell you, hey, there was some that came out here and then and when. And, you know, if they're more detailed from this era or from that era or from, from anything. And the more I get them, uh, the more I'll probably learn about them and be able to talk about them. But uh, that's all I know for now. But I just like this car. I think it's really cool. I had a bid out on a gold version of this, and I really wanted that one, but the bid went up too high and I didn't get it. So I ended up having to settle for the silver version. And I, But I think the silver version does look really cool. And it's just a really, really cool car. And... It's got some history to it, so if you ever want to read up on it, that's pretty awesome. All of these cars from the 70s, I just think, are fantastic. It's really my kind of becoming like my favorite kind of thing is like these European 70s cars. It would be really awesome to see my favorite brand do some of these and get some licenses and start doing some of this stuff. I know it's not going to happen, but if Auto World started doing that stuff, oh boy, I think that would be really cool. All right, so... Second to last here, we got the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. So everybody knows this car, right? This, I guess, could be considered Britain's first supercar. Here's a quick look at what's in the series. Not a huge Aston Martin fan, but there are a couple of Aston Martins that I like, and this is definitely one of them. Really cool. This car is really cool. These were made from 1977 all the way up to 1989. Had a top speed of 170 miles an hour. Could do 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Front engine, rear wheel drive, 5.3 liter V8. And most people know this car in a silver color from James Bond. Uh, from the James Bond movie, In the Living Daylights, which I believe was a version of this car. Uh, so really cool. We got a little crooked taillight right back there. Not a huge deal, but you don't see that as much from Kyosho as you do uh, Greenlight and other car, die-cast car manufacturers that have that. This one's not a roller really at all either. The front axle rolls good, the back axle does not, but it is screwed together. So if I were so inclined, I could take this thing apart and kind of play with it and probably get it to roll. Not that I should have to do that, but looks pretty good. You got lens detail in the front, lens detail in the back. 
I just love the color of this one. I'm glad I got the red one. I think it looks fantastic in this color. And it's just a really great looking car. Just a beautiful piece of art, you know, in my opinion. So I think that is pretty cool. And then lastly, so now we're going to get out of the 70s a little bit here and go with this Aston Martin LMP1. So the LMP1, I'm just going to pull it out real quick, which by the way was available not in different colors, but in different numbers. And these were real cars, so the 7, the 8, and the 9 car. Um, those were real cars that really raced. Um, this is a Le Mans prototype car, which by the way, that's what LMP stands for. Le Mans prototype and here it is and it looks awesome um, of course in golf livery which is great it did use golf fuel and there it is so v12 it raced from 2009 to 2011 27 races nine wins and this one is a roller it does roll it rolls pretty good actually and this is the only like modern like Le Mans car that I've got in my collection from Kyosho. And they do actually quite a bit of these Le Mans cars. And I think they look absolutely fantastic now that I've got one. Great detail in the lensed headlights. Um, great detail all around. And they just look quite fantastic. So I really like them. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, it's a lot of Kyosho. I know not all of you guys are really into the Kyosho stuff. Um, I know there's some people that watch these videos that probably really only like the Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Mattel stuff. Maybe I don't give you that much credit. And maybe you guys do all like looking at this stuff. I don't know. But I love it. Um, I think it's quite fantastic. There are no Kyosho Chase pieces, so there's nothing for you Chase collectors to go after with Kyosho. But finding one of these Kyoshos in, in some particular models and finding them for an affordable, cheap price is like finding a Chase. It just is. This may be my favorite one of the ones I just recently got. I think that just looks so awesome like that. But really, really cool. And then, of course, we looked at some Hot Wheels today that were pretty cool as well. So, all right. So that's going to be it for this, this week's video, guys. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the added little information I gave you about the, uh, the cars that I picked up and all that stuff. So let me know in the comments down below. And, yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.